What you guys got another video here for you on things that might stop you from upgrading to Windows 11. Now it's been quite a long time since the release of Windows 11 and I wanted to give you an update on some of the things that might still stop you from upgrading to Windows 11 and one of these is still hardware requirements. Microsoft have not backed down on their strict hardware requirements for Windows 11 so you will need to make sure that your system is fully compatible with Windows 11. Now we already know that you can purchase these TPM 2.0 chips and they're pretty cheap now. At first they were really expensive and it made it a non-viable uh, thing to do but now you can pick these up for a few pounds and you can use these to basically get Windows 11 on your system in a legit way rather than using the bypass method. Uh, so Microsoft doesn't seem to lower their stance on hardware requirements. So that means a lot of hardware, when the end of Windows 10 comes, it's going to uh, be a lot of old systems ending up in landfill unless they start using other operating systems. The second one for me is the limited taskbar options. There's a lot of people that prefer the Windows of old where you can expand the taskbar and you can move the taskbar to the left of the screen or to the right of the screen or even up the top. Unfortunately, Microsoft again haven't backed down on this and it's because of a lot of reasons. It's not because they don't want to do it, it's for the fact that they probably can't because of the widgets and other stuff they have built into Windows 11 which actually stops you from doing it. So unless you disable all of those, you can use a workaround in the registry and hack the registry to basically allow you to get your uh, taskbar on the left or on the side. You can even get it on the top as well. But again, you will need to disable a bunch of different features to be able to have this happen. This taskbar uh, will not go on the side with this big widget here because obviously it won't work correctly. And the same goes for the right hand side. And it just doesn't work well with Windows 11. So if you're one of these people that like your taskbar in any of these places, then Windows 11 might not be for you if it means that you're going to have to adapt and learn to use Windows 11 with the traditional uh, taskbar down the bottom. And it's very narrow as well. It won't allow you to expand it even wider. So the large start menu is another big issue for me personally. I hate this start menu so badly. It's just not designed very well, and it just seems like they've just put a big square uh, a GUI there with a bunch of icons on it, and it just doesn't have any sort of style to it like previous generations have. Now, you can get around this. You can basically uh, get around this by downloading and installing Start uh, All Back, or you can download Start 11 or something like that to replace the actual start menu and that's one of the things I would recommend people do if you don't like this because I'm pretty sure you won't like it and uh, once you replace it with one of those Windows 11 becomes a lot more manageable and a lot more usable in my personal opinion that is one of the biggest Achilles heels for Windows 11 in my personal opinion the, another one which I want to cover on is too many clicks there's tons of clicks that you have to go through to get to a certain location in Windows 11 for some reason they've buried all of the settings deep down into the operating system and whereas it used to be a couple of clicks and you're there now you seem like you're doing loads of clicks to get to even the sound settings here as you can see I'm already three or four in here and you still have to click on a few more to get to the old school legacy uh, one here which is down in uh, more sound settings here now you can get to this in a quicker way by right clicking on the bottom right hand side as i'll show you in a second but again it's what they're going to be doing is phasing out all of these old legacy uh, ones in the future and you will be forced to use this method and it's the same thing in networking it can be a bit tiresome to go through and click on these uh, settings don't know whether you heard that but that was a massive lightning strike there that <laughs> scared me but anyway, you can see uh, the network settings here is like literally uh, buried deep as well. So if you're one of these people that want fewer clicks, then Windows 11 is definitely not going to be for you because a lot of these settings are buried deep into the OS. And uh, it's not just sound and networking. It's a lot of other settings as well where you'll find yourself click, click, click just to get to a location. 
So bear that in mind. Now, eventually, I think Microsoft's plan is to remove all of the old control panel and all of the old legacy uh, menus that you see in Windows 11. They are phasing these out, and it could be a case that this will be no more. And I do like control panel, so I hope they don't completely remove it. But knowing Microsoft, they probably will. Now, another big problem for Windows 11 is bloat. A lot of people don't like the amount of bloat inside Windows 11. Background apps, unwanted applications forced upon you during the installation process. And there's a lot of other things inside here, like settings that you don't need or applications that have been bundled in with it that you will never ever use. And you have to go through laboriously and uninstall all of this stuff. And there is programs and scripts out there that do this for you. But again, for people that don't want a bloated system, then Windows 11 is certainly not going to be for you. It has got a lot of bloat inside here, even inside the settings here in the privacy and security. There's a ton of stuff in here that you have to go through all the time and turn this stuff off. You would have thought they would have had an opt out switch, which I've said many times, we could just toggle that off and just opt out of all of these. There's only really two settings in all of this stuff that I have turned on, and that's camera and microphone. All the other stuff, I just go through and turn off. Forced advertisements is another big problem. They are going to start bombarding you with forced ads that you don't want, and you'll have to physically go in and to turn a lot of this stuff off. Again, if you don't do it, you're going to be getting adverts forced upon you inside Windows, and it's not what... I want as an operating system. So you do need to go through and do a lot of this stuff. Unfortunately, if you're one of these people that don't like tweaking Windows, then Windows 11 certainly isn't for you because there's a ton of stuff in here that you have to physically go in and tweak and turn off, unfortunately. But that's just the way Windows 11 is going. And I dread to think what Windows 12 will be like when that's released, if it's going to be called Windows 12. They are definitely going to be releasing a new OS, that's for sure. Now, all that I've spoken about in this video is completely uh, changeable with uh, methods that I've covered in videos previously. So if that is what you want to do and upgrade to Windows 11 and use those methods to remove the start menu and do other stuff, you can do the actual improvements to other locations like Notepad and Explorer and a bunch of other places that Microsoft are working on have been major improvements and I do like them and I do like the way Windows 11 is starting to look but there is still areas to cover like this area here who uses the web search inside the start menu I mean if you're looking for something on your computer you're going to search on your computer you don't want to be looking at stuff that's coming up here and again, if you want to search the web, you open a browser. Same thing with uh, Cortana. They are now removing Cortana from Windows finally. But guess what? It is going to be replaced with uh, Copilot, which is a true AI technology. And uh, this is going to be also inside Windows. So if you're one of these people that doesn't like AI technology, well, it's going to be coming uh, to Windows. And uh, again, Cortana will be removed finally. No one ever used Cortana, and I think people just didn't like it. But again, it is going to be uh, decommissioned and removed. So this is going to be replaced finally. Now, there's a few more little things I don't like about Windows 11, which I'll cover right now. I've been using Windows 11 since the beginning and since the release, and there's a few things that I go through just to disable stuff like widgets and things like that because I don't need them, and I turn off a lot of settings. And that's pretty much it. But I'll go through some of the things that I don't like here as well, which is the Windows 11 requirements when signing in. You need to you sign in with a Microsoft account. And this is another thing. People purchase the Windows 11 Pro or Windows 10 Pro, and now they're forced to have to have a Microsoft account to sign into Windows 11 during the installation process. There is a simple bypass with all of this stuff, as you would guess. But again, you shouldn't have to jump through hoops to uh, get this done. And I think Microsoft know it's being done. And surely they can see that people are doing it. And if that's the case, then remove it. Stop doing things that people don't like. There must be masses of people that don't like the bloat, that don't like all this stuff. 
but they continue to keep piling more and more in. And again, you have to go through this to install Windows 11. And it was never a thing for Windows 11 Pro uh, uh, because it used to allow you to bypass it. Another one is the Action Center. That is gone in Windows 11. If you like the Action Center, then maybe Windows 11 is not for you. I personally never used it, but some people probably do. And uh, if you did, then obviously you'll be disappointed to know that that has now been removed from Windows 11, along with the timeline, which has also uh, been removed. Another thing I don't like is the right click context menu. They've not done anything with this, and it's a complete uh, bodge. It really is. I don't understand what they're doing here, but it's just horrible. And th again, there is another workaround, as you can see here. And again, this is the right click context menu I'm using on my system. As you can see, much more usable, much more user friendly. And if someone can create uh, an application that does this, then why don't Microsoft implement that into their operating system? This is something we've used for many years. And it seems to me that when they released Windows 11, there was a lot of unfinished projects like the right click context menu and the start menu. I do not believe that these are finished items. And I believe they just rushed it out and just put those onto the system and you're then forced to use something like this. So again, unless they fix this, it's going to be a, a change that you're going to have to make to the system to make it more user friendly. So again, it's entirely up to you whether you upgrade to Windows 11. Windows 11 is a nice operating system. It really is. Uh, it's not bad. It's just it's got a few fundamental flaws, in my personal opinion. No operating system is going to be perfect, of course, but these sort of things are things that we use every day and we got so used to it. But now it's got to the point where overloading it with bloat and, of course, uh, using these uh, start menu and right click context menu, you have to go through and change a lot of this stuff to make it more user friendly, in my personal opinion. Let me know in the comments section below whether you get on well with Windows 11 the way it is without any changes and whether you don't want to change it and you're quite happy with the way it is. Anyway, but that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support, and I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.